What's up guys, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to do an oil change on the outboard. We're going to get the Dimco uh, hitch all hook, hooked back up, ready to go. We're going to get some new tires on this guy. We're going to check the uh, grease and the wheel bearings, put some new grease in that. Nothing else top them off. Uh, like I said, I've never done it. And the previous owner probably has never done it. And so we're going to get started here in a minute and uh, we get set back up and give you a kind of rundown of what we got. Hold tight. Alrighty, so we've got so our tool kit out here, master kit, just to make it easy to pick and choose what we need and go from there. We've got a new sending unit for the fuel tank. Uh, we've got our grease gun for the wheel bearings. We've got our 3M sealant. Uh, if you haven't watched the previous videos, Go back and check them out. We're doing a uh, fish finder install, Garmin, and need a little bit of silicone to kind of get it sealed up and make sure it's not leaking on top of our switches. Uh, we've got our Mercury Marine four stroke uh, oil. We've got our fuel filter, oil filter, the impeller. Uh, this guy is the thermostat. And you can tell the difference between the old and the new on condition wise. And uh, ordered from the marine shop in town, Best Marine in Wheat Ridge. Uh, but they didn't have the seals, so we got the seals on order and should be in Tuesday, Wednesday, or so. And we'll get that. And these are the gaskets for the impeller. I need an oil filter wrench, a couple rags. Uh, there's the twist lock that we're going to be putting back on the boat the trailer itself and some good old WD-40 and some brake cleaner. That's kind of overview. Oh, and a catch bucket for the waste oil with the lid. Uh, dump it down at our office. We've got a waste oil heater down there and we'll burn it for heat. So we get the camera repositioned, get set up, and we'll get started. All right, we're back. Uh, first step we're going to do, we're going to move the cowling off the engine. Set it to the side. We've got our engine check here and engine fill here and our oil filter. So the drain plug method we're going to be using, they offer a different one where you can put it in here and use a pump to pump it out, but I think that's more for if your boat sits in the water, you can change the oil outside while it's sitting in the water, but since we're on land, obviously we're going to Go ahead and do it on land. So, first thing we're going to grab is a 18 millimeter. I'm going to break it loose a little bit. Oh, that's a little tougher than I thought. I think there's some pliers for that kind. but I like to get all the parts and pieces kind of out of the way, the fuel cap, the dipstick, all that kind of stuff ahead of time. Do the same thing when I'm changing the oil on my truck. Should be 
actually running these things for a few minutes, kind of getting them warm, get the oil loosened up. Um, we're still dealing with our fuel system and still don't have the thermostat in. And I'd like to get all that done kind of prior to starting it. Uh, probably should do it hot, but for purposes of keep pushing along on this project to get it ready for the water, it's starting to be nice out besides the weather today, obviously. Uh, it's, well, not obviously, I guess, we don't know. Uh, but weather's supposed to be getting rainy and stuff for a few days. Uh, but coming up here real quick like we want to be able to get it out and get it in the water so we're gonna go ahead and push forward with the things that we have and some of the things we can do so uh, another good tip is to get a cardboard box or an old piece of wood or something we're gonna put it underneath the outboard uh, that way you're not getting oil all over the driveway and your wife's not pissed off at you so we we'll grab a box and we'll cut one up Your wife's like mine, there's Amazon boxes at the house, seems like every day or every other day. And so, should have plenty of boxes sitting around. This one actually happens to be mine, which is kind of funny, but that's all good. that drips on the, on the cardboard. All right, so get this guy loosened up. I can twist it by hand now. Um, you're gonna tilt the motor up. This one's convenient, it's got a tilt switch. Then you wanna turn it over. Balancing it, get your bucket. It. And I usually put pressure on it, that's what I do mine, so you kind of feel that it doesn't want to come out any farther, you kind of hear it click into itself almost. And then we're just going to pull the All these manufacturers recommend their own oil in it. Um, I don't know much about outboards other than they're expensive, and so if their oil helps it last longer, then I'll put their oil in it. And the reality is their oil's really not too much more, oh, there we go, too much more than conventional oil or non-brand specific oil, a castor oil, Valvoline, Penn's oil, whatever. And so, Easy enough to buy it, not a big deal. So, got a couple little drops already on the cardboard, so mission accomplished with using the cardboard. This uh, boat motor takes just over three quarts. Uh, if you're metric, it'll be three liters or not, so we'll just call it quartz. And uh, so yeah, we'll get the oil tip back down, get the oil filter off, and see what we got. Some more drips. So I'm gonna clean up the area where we're at. Still got some coming out. Need 
little brake cleaner and it'll help kind of clean some of this stuff off. I like to spray it onto the engine just in case it wants to start eating paint and stuff up. Put a little bit on the rag. Kind of just make sure everything kind of gets cleaned up. This thing's going to get a bath anyway here soon. Need grease and all that kind of fun stuff. So, not the end of it, just like to get some of it cleaned up first. And once we're done with this 18 millimeter, we're going to wipe everything down. Nothing aggravates me more than grease or oil on a tool. Put it back clean. Right, next up, like I said, we've got oil filter. Bring most of it out of there. I don't know how old this filter is either. Uh, I don't see a date on it. Let's see when we get it off. Which is kind of the reason, like I said, we're going to replace it. Yeah, it doesn't look great in there. You can see. Lighting's horrible. Sorry about that. From here, we're going to wipe up any little excess. Uh, oil and grease that we have, or any oil out of here. It's actually pretty clean. Doesn't hurt to clean it up. Here's the filter. This is the Mercury Marine part, or Quicksilver, which is also owned by Mercury Marine. Um, either one is at work. I'm sure other brands work as well. And then I like to get a little bit of excess oil there. Put the new filter on. The old one. A little bit of oil transfer onto the gasket so it's not so rough next time, hopefully. Do that. If you need a little more, you can always just use a little bit of the bucket. Run around also. Always got to put a little bit of oil in these seals, they seal it nicer. And uh, let's get our stuff out of the way out of here now. snug and do quarter turn to half a turn and maybe a little more get them too tight on there they're a pain in the butt to get off like the other one just was um, we'll do again is when we get the fuel system fixed up putting the uh, cap on that's another thing that was ordered it should all be in hopefully Tuesday Wednesday and uh, get the inline fuel filter to it new cap new sending unit get the fuel system going we'll bring the boat back in and I'll shoot a video on that one as well and then we'll do the fire for this and then we'll go back through and just make sure that none of the oil is leaking here and just check it again check the level make sure it's full um, we're not going to start it up until then so I've got a little time my driveway's at an angle uh, the boat's pretty level motor's pretty level it can go down quite a little bit more to really check it good but 
it takes just over three quarts. So if I put three quarts in it and a, t a touch more, we should be uh, right in the ballpark where we need to be. And uh, let's get, get some oil in this thing. Like it says here for a little fill, that yellow cap. Uh, it's pretty common on a lot of vehicles and boats and all sorts of stuff for a yellow cap or something like that. So here's some oil. So this is the only funnel I can find. It's a little on the small side. Uh, I have funnels sitting around for a while to get dirt and stuff kind of caked into them. You can see that. But we'll just give a little spritz of brake clean. Quick little wipe down so you know your funnel's nice and clean and good to go. hand for it, make sure you try to get all the little uh, coil seal off of it. If not, the oil wants to catch on it and makes it drip and just kind of spill all over the dang place. And it's not an overly fun spot to get a get out. And so we've got these paper towels left over. Might as well just toss them down in here. And if it spills potentially, we'll get cleaned up that way. We'll ramp this up just a tiny bit. here it's got a measurement one two three this is course on one side leaders on the other uh, like I said it takes three quarts we'll have just a splash left over out of this so we'll pour a large majority of it to kind of look back down again and I'll show you that Next time we do an oil service on this thing, we'll just uh, go ahead and get a different funnel. It'll fit in there a little nicer and make life a lot easier. I know they have like a 100 hour service, a 300 hour service on these things, and different stuff you should do. These little small engines is maintenance, maintenance, and more maintenance, but oil change, oil filter, a little bit of time is far cheaper and you know replacing an engine to rebuild these things you guys haven't looked at the cost of these they're expensive I was a lot naive when I bought my open bow boat with a blown up outboard oh it should be thousand two thousand bucks no problem uh, for 175 horsepower sadly mistaken those are you know an okay used one is you know four thousand five thousand dollars so on the side here we got a little bit below the cork, we're going to hold off on there. We're going to grab our old rag, wipe up any, any excess that we have. Spilt a tiny bit, actually going to happen. And we'll lower it down and check the level on it. all cleaned off. It's got marks on here for an add or a max. It's got a bunch of hash marks filled in between. Those are the little all there. Push all the way in. Drag it back out. And we're at the max. So that, that'll work perfectly. Like I said, we're still going to check it again before we go out. And really, every time you go out, you should be checking oil on it just in case something screwy happens. Um, it can show you uh, if you got water in your oil. Uh, if you, you know, if you have 
he checked it before he went out to the lake. Next time you go out again, it was, it was checked it was good. He went back out in the lake, come back and it's over full. A lot of this new oil has got a lot of detergent in it. It's hard to see the water. Um, it has like a, they call a milkshake. I mean, this thing sits in the water. This seal's bad. It can easily let water seep in. Always good to just do a good oil change. And I don't know about these, we've had dirt bikes and quads and whatnot. And, and we changed them. We had a long two day ride. We would uh, change the oil on them. Like I said, it's a little expensive and run good oil. A um, little expensive, but you know, like I said, the maintenance and, and repair of this thing for someone, a boat shop to come out. I mean, they're $150 an hour to work on these things. And so that's why I learned real quick to work on your own stuff. And changing the oil, as you just saw, is a real simple task. It took 10, 15 minutes. A lot longer to talk and film it, but you know, overall, it doesn't take a whole lot of tools. You know, if you had to go buy even just a uh, 18 millimeter wrench to pop this off, you could, you know, easily pick one up for three, four bucks. The oil filter wrench about five, six bucks, and you have everything you need to change the oil. And not to mention, you can do it on your time, not their time. And uh, that's about it for this video. If you could uh, please like, subscribe, share, comment. Let me know what you guys think. Um, I'm gonna get to do a little more record today. We'll do a little bit of more maintenance. I'll probably just throw it in that video too. Why not? Um, so give me a minute, hang tight. We're gonna get cleaned up and get situated again. Thanks. All right, before we get started, got the oil cap back on and just kind of cleaned up and wiped up as we're going. So the cowling back on, that'll be it for this video. We'll set it up in the mode to tow. We're gonna move it today, like I said, and go get some um, new tires on this thing. It'll take you along for that as well. And I'm gonna throw the cowling on. <laughs> here if you can see it or not for a uh, transom saver and it kind of just puts the weight of the engine and off the hydraulics back onto the trailer um, let's see if I can show you that so it's that little squares for aluminum square and it pushes up and tucks in and put a strap around the motor itself um, move the camera we'll get set up and I'm gonna pump up some wheel bearings pump, up, pump some grease and some wheel bearings and well, might as well do all four. We're already out and about and doing it. And then uh, we'll go to the front of the boat and we'll get set up with the uh, uh, trailer hitch there. And I'll show you backing and all that kind of fun stuff. So hang tight. All right, we'll back up the wheel bearings now. These ones just have little uh, rubber covers. Twist off. And they got a little greaser. Same on both sides. Working up. We're gonna pump a little bit of grease into them. If you don't have a grease gun, go invest in one. They're great. Another easy way to have your grease stored. Put these ones. Some grease. I know they have a spot to kind of get a feel for how much grease you can put in them. Uh, one of these things coming up maintenance wise. Uh, I like to think it's this season but who knows. Um, we're going to come through and pull these off and repack all the bearings, re-grease them all. And that's just not knowing what the maintenance has done or do they put you know oil in, do they or do they grease them regularly or, or what. So and uh, I'm just going to repeat the same side of same thing on the other side. And I'm going to get set up again, pump those full of grease first, and then we'll uh, get set up again on the front and show you that. Hang tight. Alright guys, first thing we're going to do, we're going to take off this trailer lock, wall lock.
this thing twisted off, loosened up. Now the way I have it, this weight goes back in. It's got a little latch here. This piece sits into, spring goes on top of that. And the other latch comes up, has through here, and you screw on the cap. I'm gonna give this thing a little spritz of WD-40. Like I said, it goes on the bottom. The spring. And this latch piece will come up and through. Maybe I need more hands than just the two. Let's see if we can't get this guy situated up there. That, that just screws in there. There we go. This thing should have some sort of pen or something in it, some sort in it. Um, I call for like a hog ring. I don't have a hog ring. I do have is a piece of uh, it's a stake for pounding in and putting down landscape fabric. So we'll just try to bend and cut a piece for this. And all this really does is just stops it from the knob twisting all the way off. Um, so it's not a huge, it's definitely not a structural part by any means. Uh, let me grab some channel locks, hang on. will fit down there. Naturally they won't. Option number two. I'm gonna bend one side and see if maybe that works. There we go. That pin's a little long, so let's do another little trim on it. these all over the driveway. Try some needle nose. Hold on. what we need. It's going to allow it to come off, which is perfect. And it's twist around, lock in place. So, try to find that piece that I dropped real quick. And, uh, the truck backed up to it. And, uh, I'll grab my magnet. Uh, we'll get the truck backed up to it, hooked up, and put it out in the driveway. or out on the street. And, uh, get ready for it to head down and get some tires on it. So hang tight and we'll walk you guys through that. Hey right, guys, we're all loaded up. Put the cover on. what we ended up doing to the hitch here. So I got it all tightened down and then we ended up, uh, I ended up putting the latch through and this will, theory, hopefully, stop it from twisting off uh, without having to buy a new, new setup there. So I'll do a quick little walk around. There it goes, cooperate finally. So let's get the cover all on. You need to replace that snap right there. Finish peeling off some stickers. Got a cover on the outboard motor. And 
until we get a transom saver, just put a strap around it to stop it from kind of hard corner or something twisting and whatnot. And she's uh, ready for the road. And we'll end up getting some new tires. These ones are the originals, uh, which from 2002 are all dry rod and not worth a shit. And we're gonna put a new spare on also. It's one of little trouble free boating, you know, get out there and you. The last thing you want to deal with is the flat tires, or I mean, it'll happen here and there anyway, but you know, don't want to have another added problem if we don't not need it. So that's it for now. Uh, hang tight, we're gonna be at the, the tire store and we'll get some tires on the thing. guys we're on our way to get tires and during about three miles or so we're gonna pull over and just check the hitch see if that little bar I put on there worked or whatever the heck you want to call it and uh, hang time to jump out we'll take a look well first off the trailer's still there let's take a look so pinned it around it's on there nice and tight so say that that's probably working. We'll uh, definitely keep an eye on it and do a little more tests with it, make sure it's still good and go from there. All right, we'll see you at the tire shop. All right guys, made it back to the tire shop. Uh, dropped the boat off, got it done about an hour. Uh, killed it, looks good. I'm gonna turn you around right quick so we can take a look. We're all hooked up. Uh, while I was out, I went and got a new lock. Uh, serves two purposes. Now someone can't un just unhook it and undo it. Paranoia if someone's still in the boat. And uh, and as you can see, this locked in here. It's got nowhere it can turn. So might have solved our problem. Save us four or five hundred bucks, which is awesome. And uh, they still have a spare to do. They only had the four in stock. So we'll go back next week, pick it up. Got four new tires in this guy. Trailer Kings and uh, good price. I got a road hazard. I got about 30 or 40 different locations here in Colorado and Kansas and New Mexico and stuff. And that's why we kind of went with these guys. Still fairly local, smaller company, so pretty excited about that. And uh, yeah, so now we're going to make our way out to my buddy's house. We're going to get this thing dropped off, avoid any fines from the HOA and uh wait on some parts and we get some parts we'll pull back in and we'll uh get working on it again coming up here pretty soon we'll probably plan on taking out first trip should probably be the weekend after uh, maybe two weekends after memorial day and uh we'll plan a trip out and take you along for that as well so hang tight we'll uh shoot a little more once we get up to my buddy's house all right thanks all right got the boat dropped off we're going to leave it here for a week or two. We'll get some more parts in. And uh, towed out here real nice. Tires are awesome. And the latch worked great. So now we're uh, going to head out. It's starting to rain. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. If you guys want to like, subscribe, comment, share. Talk to you later.